The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 200. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of successful women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Subscribe to our newsletter by visiting thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan. And today, before I announce our amazing guests, I wanted to let all the listeners know that this will be the last show of the season, and I will be returning with some more amazing women on September 1st, 2016. So enjoy the last show and be sure to check out past episodes of stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Now today, I'd love to introduce you this phenomenal woman. She is a empowerment women's coach and transformational speaker and I'm just excited to have her on and share her story so without further ado I'm going to introduce you to Sonali Fisk. Sonali how are you today maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Sure I'm doing great Sheena thank you for having me and yes I am as you briefly introduced me thank you for the introduction I I do mentor women uh, who want to take a more visible uh, leadership platform Uh, help them kind of embody their feminine authority, their wise woman voice, and take their message to the world or on the stage. And uh, I work with visionary women, trailblazers, and emerging leaders. I also speak, uh, give signature talks, and conduct workshops for women who want to embody their message more deeply. So it's it's such an honor and pleasure to be here. And uh, I also help women through my three- and six-month programs and private coaching to help them boldly align with their true soul purpose and their feminine authority. Awesome. I love it. You know, I think the more women out there trying to empower other women, the better. I always believe, you know, we lift each other up than competing with each other. So, you know, I'm glad you're doing such amazing things. And Sonali, what's your cultural background? Yeah, so I I was actually born in Sri Lanka. I am a Sri Lankan American. I emigrated here to the United States in 1992 with my family. And I spent a lot of time in Sri Lanka as well, uh, as having lived here the majority of my life. But I have spent uh, some time doing humanitarian work uh, in Sri Lanka after the tsunami and uh, been able to take my message there as well. So Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Gosh, this is a good one. And there's so many of them out there, right? There's so many amazing, empowered women that um, share their gifts with us. And one that resonates with me deeply late of late is this beautiful immigrant poetess, Rupi Kaur. And there's one of her quotes, her, her lesser known quotes, I would like to say, where she shares, they have no idea what it is like to lose home at the risk of never finding home again. Have your entire life split between two lands and become the bridge between two countries. Now that obviously is a very strong message for me being an immigrant woman myself and having to straddle these two cultures and not necessarily being able to embody or fit into one in particular and how you kind of sway between these two cultures. So that that quote actually hits a deeper part of me. Awesome. And that's a great quote. That's actually the first time I've heard of it, because I'm also, as well, as an, an, an immigrant, um, you know, my family moved from the Philippines to Canada. And yeah, you know, it's a culture like barrier, right? I mean, here you are living in, in a country where it's like, you know, a totally different culture, the way of living, and then you still have your where you come from. And sometimes, you know, you got to infuse the two to make it work um, for you. So you know, it, it can be challenging at times. But it's also a great thing, right? You kind of have, you know, two worlds in, into one, if that made sense. But <laughs> yeah, mm. um, you know, Makes. and you know, I really, I really love that quote. It's actually the first time I've heard of it. So thanks for sharing that. And you know, in your own words, how would you define self confidence? You know, I, I personally believe that a greater sense of confidence in oneself comes from unpacking your own story. You know, the truth of who you are and why you are. And then, you know, going on this soul journey of self-discovery, discovering what your soul purpose is, and then using that as a conduit to, to transform our world, actually taking that message to the world. 
I love it. And you know, I think a lot of women out there are too afraid to tell their story, right? Um, especially with Asian women, because, oh, yeah. because they're afraid they might shame the family, or they might do something wrong. When really, you know, these, these are the kind of stories we want to hear so we can inspire the world. You know, I mean, this was one of the reasons why I created this podcast, I wanted a platform for women you know, to share their stories from struggle to triumph, you know, from from being at their lowest to going up to their highest. And, you know, it's great when we hear, you know, women like like you, you know, coming from different backgrounds or, you know, something relatable. And we can say, you know, if they can do it, I can do it as well. So love the definition. And uh, Sonali, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, I'll be honest, you know, it's it's a it's a constant process of, of discovering and rediscovering confidence in oneself and knowing one's own, you know, worth. But um, like a lot of women, I came from, you know, as I mentioned, I, I grew up part of my life in Sri Lanka and come from an immigrant background. So, you know, I, I came from a strong male dominant patriarchal structure. Uh, I grew up feeling less than and kind of grew accustomed to kind of melding into the background, right? I devalued myself at a very early age and came to this country as a preteen, kind of shy and a little scared and feeling all the vulnerability that comes with migration. And I, but I knew I had to fit in very quickly and quietly as possible to assimilate, right? That, that we know a lot about assimilation being immigrant women, but you assimilate into a very dominant Western culture. So you have to figure out how to kind of disappear into the fray, kind of learn to fly under the radar and careful not to make any waves, right? The whole idea is not to be visible, right? The whole point is to to, to not stand out. So blending in, you know, I, I got very accustomed to playing small, and and I was confined to to that story, um, and it took a while to kind of break that mold and realize that I had a story to tell. Thanks for sharing, and uh, you know it's something that most you know women of Asian culture go through, right? You know we've been told to never make any noise, just to be in the background. You know, just make sure everyone mm-hmm. else is happy, even if it you know compromises your own happiness. And that's when most women feel like they're not themselves, or they go through you know stages of maybe depression, and they just feel like. You know, their life is trapped in this like box and they can't get out of it because, you know, they're just doing what's been told rather than doing what they want to do. And, you know, it was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you didn't have to go through all that, that you can be the person that you are today. That's so powerful, Sheena, you know, what you're saying. And this is why I love doing what I do as a women's empowerment mentor, you know, working with other immigrant women, other transnational women of color, kind of breaking that barrier. You know, there we become so accustomed to kind of merely going through the day to day, um, staying quiet, as you say, and not going past that, you know, that we kind of become very comfortable with doing what's popular or doing what works or doing what brings us the most money instead of asking the deeper questions about what is my purpose? What, what am I here to do? What is the greater potential that's trying to emerge? And of course, I had to ask those questions of myself, right? Before I can even begin to help others uh, discover their own story. I had to, uh, you know, go through my own heap of painful life experiences, you know, a, a and a one very particular dark night of the soul, I like to call it, to get to my own personal awakening. And suffice it to say, there was a kind of a bright, shiny moment when I knew I could no longer afford to play small and kind of hide in the shadow of my, you know, past painful experiences. I knew that it would have me if I did. But in order to build this new trajectory, this, this, sort of rebirth, I had to tap into the vision for my life. I had to go on a soul adventure to see what was waiting to emerge. You know, the pain of where I was, was far greater than the pain of growth and of the unknown. So I had to get really curious about it, to get really okay with the unknown of not knowing so that I can tap into the possibilities that could exist for me. And I, honestly, Sheena, I was willing to do whatever it took to get clear and to get an integrity with the vision that was trying to emerge. And, you know, th- that's the beautiful part about this is that that process, those steps that I took that worked for me, 
is what I actually use to help my own clients to get her to tap into the deeper part of herself and her story and her mission. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, a lot of people don't realize it has that change really has to start with them and figure out, you know, what is stopping them from becoming the person that they are, you know, tapping into that power. And, you know, I'm glad you took step by step, regardless what was going to happen. You didn't even know what the outcome was going to be. You just started working on yourself. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? Yeah, it, it's an amazing life. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, uh, there's definitely a space of stuckness uh, that I went through, right? Uh, and, and, and I hear this from a lot of women, this feeling of kind of feeling stuck at the drawing board, or, you know, she's experienced ca- this kind of a haze or a blur, or struggling through some uncertainty around a specific project or a vision. But what I want to tell her is, or, or if I could, if, you know, what I would like to offer her is that to be patient with yourself in that gap, you know, to practice a lot of self-compassion as your vision emerges. I, I know I was hard on myself, as we tend to be as immigrant women. Why aren't I already there yet, you know? Well, the vital part of this emerging feminine authority is to be, you know, loving and gentle with yourself in this gap and accept where you are and continue to nurture yourself. And allow yourself just to take one step, you know, just just one teeny tiny step in the direction of your dream. Because that clarity for me came from taking action. Nothing seems to alchemize fear and confusion more than actually taking action. So, you know, I'd like to say that you can't see it until you step into it. So, you know, be patient with yourself, but also have a support system. Build a kind of the structural support around you for your dream to emerge. Um, whether that be, you know, it looks different for every woman, but whether that be having a mentor or a coach and having a good group support you and help you stay accountable and help you stay in consistent motion. I think that is what is essential to helping you live your purpose and allowing the world to see you for who you are. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Sonali, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, absolutely. I, I do have a website, which is sonalifisk.com. That's S-O-N-A-L-I-F-I-S-K-E.com. You can find out more about what it is that I do and um, and actually I wanted to offer, you know what, come to think of it, Sheena, I would love to offer your subscribers or your listeners a special gift and that is a 30 minute purpose clarity breakthrough session Uh, it's where you get a little 30 minute one-on-one private time with me to kind of really break down what it is that you're struggling with or maybe it's a specific project or vision that you're trying to bring to the world we can get we help you get really clear on what that is for you in that session so wanted to offer that to your listeners if she wanted to kind of take advantage of that. Awesome. And I'm sure, you know, the listeners will love to take that advantage, a free 30 minute call to check out their purpose and get clear on things. So listeners, you know, get on that free gift. And if you also want to connect with Sonali, you can also head on over to the TavSelfConfidence.com and search for Sonali's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Sonali for taking the time to share her story and journey with us. So thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Sheena. It was an honor, Sonali. And to our listeners, thank you again for tuning in to the Tao Self-Confidence, listening to all these amazing women's stories. And as I mentioned before, I will be back on September 1st, 2016 for more amazing stories of phenomenal women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. In the meantime, feel free to check back past episodes, uh, download them. You can listen to them at any time and we'll see you in September. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Check out our resources to help you jumpstart your inner journey to self-confidence by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com.